Hello, you're listening to Food Rebels and I'm your host, AJ Sharp. This is the Food and Drink Show. As you know, we were dedicated to the exciting world of food founders, challenger brands and people in the industry who are doing really cool and exciting different things. For the next 30 minutes, we'll be providing just some on-air tastings. We'll do a little bit of food and drink entertainment. Just really kind of get behind get behind the curtain and see what, what's going on with the experts we have in the show today. I am joined again by the wonderful Rebecca Willard, who is a, she's a great taste judge. She's a recipe writer. She runs a kind of pop-up kitchen from her at Modern Country Kitchen, which is on Instagram. Have a little look at that. And has written for lots of national magazines, that sort of thing. So welcome back. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to interrupt you and say it's The Modern Country Kitchen. Oh, sorry. At <laughs> The Modern Country Kitchen. We don't kitchen. know where you'll go if you go to the other <laughs> one. It's not mine. <laughs> There's always loads of really cool different tips and ideas, isn't there, on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a chef, so it's it's a lot of recipes um, if you want to, if you like finding your recipes from Instagram and social media. Recipes and delicious looking food and good ideas for dinner parties, I find. Yes. I have a little stalk of you. <laughs> what have you been making recently that I can steal? <laughs> Today, we've got some experts in the uh, studio with us, and we're going to be talking about milk alternatives. Yes. Do you use milk alternatives? Uh, we personally don't, um, because we're very lucky to have a very local high welfare dairy that delivers to us. But I know a growing number of my friends, especially who have children who with intolerances to dairy, are looking for, for alternatives. And... When I do a coffee order, if we're on a shoot, uh, whereas everybody used to drink milk, I find now there's an oat milk or a coconut milk or can I have a soy? Or, yeah, so it's definitely something I've noticed is growing in popularity. Oh, absolutely. It's um, I mean, you only need to open the f- office fridge, yeah. you know, in the <laughs> studio and there's about four different milk varieties. I had exactly that. My daughter has a, a dairy intolerance. Mm. And so she's drunk an alternative milk. And, and initially we were advised by the... NHS to to go for something like an almond milk which at the time there was only really almond milk on the market that was Mm. really one of the first ones that came almond or soy and she was allergic to soy so she had to have almond and I remember reading this article about how dreadful it was the environment (laughs) all sorts of things you know me think oh my goodness what have we done something else to feel guilty about something else to feel guilty about and now there's obviously a bazillion different milk varieties from rice to all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I um, I have to cook with them quite a lot if I'm doing recipes for vegans or um, you know dairy intolerant and that kind of thing. And it's really nice to have the choice mm. of different milks that work for different things and work in different ways as well. So that's good. Yeah, they all bring a different flavour characteristic, yeah. don't they? I've really noticed that over the years as we've gone through the iterations from almond to um, we now drink oat a lot because I've read that it's slightly more sustainable. I don't know because we might be about to discover that that's actually moved on again. Yeah. And all all of them bring different flavour characteristics to your kind of pancakes or whatever whatever it is you're making, which I find fascinating. But we've got some really cool guests in the studio today. So welcome to, uh, forgive me if I pronounce this incorrectly, Suhani? Yep. That's perfect. That's, yeah. Okay, brilliant. From the Good Pea Company and your co-founder, Nikki Gog, also Good. from the Good Pea Company. <laughs> yeah. We could call you Sue, you yeah. told us, didn't you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Who, who would like to kind of kick us off and, and describe the company for us? Sue, do you want to start? Yeah. So basically, uh, the idea came in the first lockdown of 2020. So it was Nikki. Um, we both know each other through our husbands. And we've been friends before that as well. So one night she calls me up and she literally goes through this um, whole thing about peas or like milks and stuff. And then she's like, do you want to change the world with me? Or do you want to keep on drinking porridge water? <laughs> that is the, the rest of your life. <laughs> do you want to change the world? Yes, please. <laughs> so this happened when um, I had my second daughter in December 2019. And I was kind of, you know, getting back into the routine of like fitness and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in March, uh, lockdown happened. And then my th- three-year-old, my older daughter at that time, was going through like a lactose intolerance phase temporarily. So I was looking for a milk for her 
that would give her all the nutrition, but at the same time be healthy as well because she's really fussy. <laughs> so um, I was talking to Nikki at that time and um, she was going through a similar journey uh, where her husband had got eczema and, you know, they just found out that his flare-ups were because of dairy. So she was looking for something. They were, they were transitioning to a plant-based diet. So then we started talking about it and we're like, oh yeah, because she's got two daughters and I've got two daughters. So we're like, what should we give to the kids that's got the nutrition, but the taste as well? Because there's some great tasting milks out there mm -hmm. in the market. I mean, the ones that are really healthy don't, ha don't really have the taste. And the ones that are really tasty don't have the nutrition. Yeah. So we're like, people are actually compromising on it. So like, why don't we come up with something where we can give them both and they don't compromise. I mean, you know, there's like they can get the best of the um, nutrition as well as the taste. So then we started researching and she came up. Yeah, I mean, it was you who came across the, the uh, Julia Albright TED Talk. Right? Yeah, so yeah. It, was a, it was a TED Talk um, with Julia. Uh, oh, I think it's pronounced Julia Albrecht. And um, she, it, I think it was called something like how peas will save the planet. Um, I thought this is really interesting. And essentially it was just about how peas are so nutritious, so high in protein naturally, but also so sustainable and so they can be used as alternatives in lots of variations and we'd seen them in kind of meat alternatives and kind of textured products but not so much in milk products and so or liquids and so we thought well actually coming from Indian heritage the both of us grew up on kind of lentils legumes split peas but more in dals and curries and we thought well we know that's full of protein we've grown up on it why not make something if you can milk an almond and you can milk a soybean, why not milk a pea? And that's where it all began, really. And just to add to Sue's point, we also, also wanted to make sure that we could come up with a milk that was free of oils because a lot of what you'll see back of pack for many of the plant milks is, is just full of rapeseed oil or sunflower oils. And as we know now, that's not great for us. So, so just to clear that up, because I think when I first read The Good Pico... My, I'm British. My immediate thought was green peas, yeah. <laughs> garden peas. No, you're but not it, the only not, one. We're not talking There's about a lot garden of peas. And they actually ask us, like, does it taste? Like, does it look green? Like, yeah. No, no, no. It doesn't, look green. <laughs> it doesn't even taste like mushy peas. It just tastes like milk. And then, yeah, when they try it, what, they're pleasantly surprised by it because it's the yellow split peas rather yeah. than yeah, rather than yeah. garden peas. It's the yellow split peas, and what we do is we grind them, and then we separate the starch and the fibre, and mm -hmm. we actually extract the pea protein isolate, and then that's what we use in our milk. So you don't get that earthy lentil taste, but mm -hmm. you get the nutrition from that the protein. That's really interesting. So is it just pea protein? Do you have to add anything to it? So so we add coconut cream and just water and vitamins, essentially. So wow. we try to keep it as clean as we can, but still get all the nutrition and the nice flavour profile as well. Fab. And where do the split peas come from? So ours come from Belgium. And again, we've tried to source them as locally as possible. So peas in the UK so far, we've not found any that can be used in liquids. They can be used, as I mentioned, textured protein, so meat alternatives. And we could have gone as far as kind of China and Canada, probably would have been cheaper for us. But we chose Belgium so that we could keep it as pure as possible in terms of the pea protein isolate and also less miles. Food getting miles. To us. So, yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> And just because something's imported, people, I think, immediately go, oh, it's been imported. It must be bad for the environment. And actually, that isn't always the case, is it? If you're importing a raw ingredient in large quantity, actually, it can be very sustainable rather than trying to get it from lots of different places across the UK. And you've got loads of lorries on the road. You know, there, there is actually a balance, isn't there? Yeah. Absolutely. And we always make sure that it's by ship as well, rather yeah. than, you know, air freight. So Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Are we allowed to try them? Yeah, please do. Can you talk us through the two different varieties you've got here? Because one's pink in the yeah. packaging and one's got this lovely sort of turquoisey blue packaging. Yeah, so the pink one's our original flavour. So that one's packed with 34 grams of protein per carton. So that matches cow's milk in terms of protein content. It's actually got 50% more calcium than cow's milk. And then we fortify it with vitamins D, B12 and iodine. So it's really nice. You'll probably taste that it's quite thick. It's got a bit of sweetness to it. But really good for protein shakes, smoothies, over cereal, overnight oats, etc. 
And then your green one is um, the barista flavor. So that froths really nicely. It's got a bit more of a neutral taste, so it doesn't change the taste of your tea and coffee. But hopefully it's got still that creamy milkiness. What is it that makes it whiter as well? Because they're a slightly different colour, aren't they? They're just slightly um, more coconut cream in that one mm-hmm. and slightly more of the pea in the original. It's very creamy, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah, it's got a good mouthfeel to it. I hate that word, but sometimes... <laughs> yeah, but it <laughs> no does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a real rich creaminess Absolutely, to it, yeah. which is unexpected from a pea, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not getting coconut. Do you use specific type of coconut that means that you don't get the coconut flavor because obviously that's quite an overpowering thing yeah it's quite it's quite a small amount that we use just to get that creaminess Mm -hmm. but we didn't really want it to taste like coconut milk Mm. so it's just very subtle yeah Yeah. that's fantastic and it's got really good levels of protein which most of these milks don't have protein do they no, you'll, so you'll get your almond milk has about is it one gram of protein yeah, gram. per serving. Um, oat milk as well, you get up to two or three grams. So um, it's quite low. Um, what you would normally get from a dairy product is eight and a half grams per serving. And we wanted to match that. So, you know, we just wanted to make sure that if you can't have dairy or you choose not to, that you still get the nutrients and you're not getting a product that's subpar and just kind of full of oils that kind of tastes like milk so um yeah that was quite important to us so that's eight and a half grams in 100 mil or something per serving so about 250 mil about 250 mil okay that's fantastic and and definitely as a parent who is using alternative milks for my daughter's you know her health and her growth and things the fact that it doesn't have protein always really bothers me yeah because it, it, you know, it's one of the things you're looking for, as, as well as all the other kind of vitamins and nutrients and things. This is really fascinating because I haven't seen any other out milks that have got such high protein levels. Have you? No, no. That's yeah, something that's normally lacking in them, hmm. and and it's good because you feel like if you give your kid a glass of it, they're going to be full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. fullish. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's a, a nice side effect. That's the feedback that we've had as well. That because of the protein element, it fills you up longer. Even in teas and coffee, mm. you're just full for longer so again that really helps and peas have got just so many health benefits haven't they yeah. you know, from kind of cholesterol and yeah. um, helping with sugars and things like that so there was, there's just a win-win for us but AJ you mentioned as well the sustainability side of things when you were you know you had your daughter on almond milk and you know that was something that was really important to us so pea milk's actually up to 74% um, lower in carbon emissions than dairy, which is huge. And then, you know, even with water usage, peas use 100 times less water than almonds to grow and 25 times less than dairy. So, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we were healthy for the planet as well as for our bodies. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I mean, for me, I would really like to drink and out milk more frequently so I I will I will kind of oscillate like you I there's a local dairy we get our milk delivered from that dairy but I also can see that dairy is not necessarily doing my body so much so many (laughs) favors as I'm getting older particularly I can see that you know I don't digest it as well Mm. and I am genuinely you know throwing in far more oat milk or alternatives into my kind of coffee regime just literally from a health point of view from a sustainability point of view and I think it's really fascinating to discover something like this that's completely different because it's it's sweet to taste isn't it initially but it's got quite a kind of tart finish on it which actually is quite cleansing really enjoy that yeah, we had um, quite a few. F- so when we were making the re- the um, the recipe, we had some feedback about just milk in in general. And often, although people like the taste of dairy milk, that aftertaste, that coating that you get on your mm. tongue, is not mm. so pleasant. So we tried quite hard to um, avoid that with our milk. So hopefully, you get like you say, quite a clean feel at the end. How did you go about coming up with the recipe? Because that's it. Seems like it's not just sort of a you know a, a cake that you make in your kitchen, like making an alternative. Alternative milk is quite, <laughs> quite yeah. a process, I imagine. Yeah, so it, it kind of started off in my kitchen, actually, in 2020, <laughs> and we were just whipping up recipes. We originally had dates in there for the sweetener, mm. and, and that was it was quite costly to on a commercial scale, but we started with that, and I would kind of just 
strain yellow split peas like you like if you're making almond milk at mm-hmm. home or anything else. And then I started giving it to my kids and then friends and family really liked it. And speaking to Sue, who was going through a similar journey, as she mentioned at the beginning, we thought, actually, there's something in this. And we realized that um, there's two children in every UK classroom that have allergies and most of them will be dairy or nuts. So if Mm -hmm. we could make something in a nut free factory that was dairy free and we're actually free of the, the top 14 allergens, then that would be pretty inclusive um, for people but once we got to that stage we really needed to work with a food technologist and to get the the flavor profile right along with the kind of nutritionals as well and so we went from there and kind of commercialized it so fantastic that's really cool so what's it like working with a friend so when we started this um we kind of knew each other before, like, two, what, two years before that, before we started, like, since 2018, early, like yeah. late 2017. So we did know each other, but, like, I think because we we haven't worked with each other, I think it's it's worked out better in terms of us working together because we've, we now know, like, because both of us are so different in what we do, it's like our skill sets are completely different. So we kind of complement each other in everything that we do, and that's worked out pretty well for us so far. So you have different roles in the company then. You're both co-founders. Yeah. So, uh, you, Sue, what's your role in the company? So I look after the marketing and um, basically any operations that go behind the business and marketing and finance and like accounts and everything. And then Nikki heads the main, the commercial side of things. So she talks to the clients and yeah, any pitching that needs to be done. So everything so Nikki handles all of that. And then she also looks after the manufacturing side of things as well with a food technologist or um, if you are coming up with another recipe or anything, then she'll be heading that. Brilliant. And so you're, you're, yeah, you're doing the recipe development side by the sound yeah, of things. Yeah, so we both, we both yeah. um, do a little bit of that. But I think main thing is I don't have a creative bone in my body. So <laughs> Sue kind of heads up all of that and she does a, a brilliant job. And I'm more, I, I've got a finance background and a banking background, so... I'm kind of interested in numbers and sales and onboarding new clients. So that's where it's worked out really well, which we didn't know before, did we? What Because as friends, I think you don't really talk about what your strengths are in business and work. So we didn't really know, but it worked out well. So And we're like, you know what, let's stick to our own strengths and let's just do what we Mm. are best at. Yeah, so she's been heading that, um, the sales and commercial side of things, which I would absolutely be rubbish at, to be honest. I mean, I'm learning so much from her. And I think you are as well from me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. So Sue, what's your background? So this is, yeah. So I have, um, I was born and raised in India. I met my husband um, in India in uni, got married to him, came here since, the, uh, I'm here since the last 11 years now. And um, so I'm a dentist by profession. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's completely <laughs> Quite like, similar. So <laughs> So it's totally like nowhere near what I'm doing right now. So I came here, practiced for a bit, worked for a bit. And then I realized that I want to do something more for the wider community and, Mm -hmm. you know, like something different as well at the same time. And when I when she called me up that night, I was like, that's it. I jumped on the gun. I was like, (laughs) I'm doing this because this is this sounds so exciting and completely different, which would take me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> and it was Sue, Sue's idea to get the 50% of calcium in there for the tea. Yeah, <laughs> well, I yeah. was going to say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Quite useful. yeah, I was like, yeah, I need to have my dentistry side to it as well to so make sure that people are getting the right calcium. That's fantastic. And so at the moment, you've got the two different varieties. Have you got kind of future plans? Are you going to build out? Are you going to go milkshakes? Are you what, what's the plan for the future? Yeah, we're thinking about um, what we want to do next. And I think we want to be quite strategic in what we want to do. I think our range is very simple at the moment. And we quite like that. I think there's um, sometimes you get ranges and there's so many you don't know what to use mm. for what and and so we we quite like the idea of keeping it sm- quite small we mm. probably will do add a little bit more maybe like an unsweetened range or something a bit more specific to kids and then we'll go from there yeah it's, it's great <laughs> but it does it's completely self-explanatory isn't it original barista you know that's the lovely creamy one for your coffees and your yeah. kind of porridges and things and originals for i guess your tea yeah 
And and the flavour is so clean, isn't it? That I yeah, feel like is, you can yeah. put it in your tea and it wouldn't ruin it. Or over cereal and you wouldn't notice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. Uh, where can people find you? So we uh, sell on our website. We're on Amazon. Uh, we're in Selfridges. And then we're kind of dotted around in about 30 independent health stores around the country. So all our stockists are on our website Fantastic. Um, as well. So That's fantastic. So... In terms of the actual process, you said you started in your kitchen and you were making it for friends and family and everyone. Do you you don't still make it like in your kitchen, do no, you? No. What are you doing now? So once we decided to commercialise it, we worked with a food technologist and then we we kind of work with a, a manufacturer in Somerset now actually, who um, is BRC AA rated and um, is free of nuts on site. So um, yeah, so that that's who we work with now. We've got really good relationship with them and hopefully we'll be able to scale quite quickly. That's really exciting. And is it? St- Still the two of you with with your third party manufacturer or is it? So two of us full time and then we have some we have kind of additional team members that we have working just on call with us and as and when we need it. We're trying to keep it quite in house at the moment, but I think um soon we'll probably have to recruit, won't we? Yeah. So yeah. That's what I hear with a lot of new businesses that yeah. they, they sort of want to do everything because you want to guarantee yeah. the quality and then you start get, getting successful and thinking, yeah. oh, we're going to have to bring someone yeah. else in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it does get to a, to that stage and where you think like, oh my God, there's like too much to do in too less of a time. Yeah. So. yeah, and you start to think, I'm okay with it being 80% fine. I'm yeah. okay with it. <laughs> I'm going to have to just let go of that last 20% perfection because yeah. 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 otherwise I'm going to pile in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. And then your two, so you said you met through your two husbands. So do they get involved in the business or or do they, are they just proudly watching from they, the sideline? They do a lot of the heavy lifting when we go <laughs> to trade shows. They're literally heavy lifting. Yes. <laughs> So with, with, I call him chief pallet mover because yeah. he's always lifting like pallets and like, lo, you know, like s- lifting stock off the pallets and then moving it for us for every time we have like a trade show or event or anything like that. So, but they do help quite a lot. Um, Are they taste testers as well? Oh, yeah. Get involved with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, always. <laughs> and the kids, I assume. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my daughters love it. Like, um, you know, the original, she has it every morning in her breakfast and mm. anything. She always loves it. And now she even tells her friends, oh, my mommy's got a pea milk business, you know, like you should try her milk. Oh. And I'm like, <laughs> free Thank marketing. You. Free marketing. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Yeah. That's and the ultimate form of PR is a personalized <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> the, the number of pictures of milk moustaches we've got. Of oh, them as my well. God, yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. I think there's something really cool, especially especially where you've got female entrepreneurs running a business where they're, you know, your kids literally watching you do all the things that, you know, certainly my generation, it it wasn't the same back then. And I I find it really empowering to just see, you know, my daughter will march into my office and sit in my chair and be like, ha ha. It's like, do you want to believe I've got a seven year old and she (laughs) actually told me once um, when I was, I was just, because she sees me every day sitting on the laptop and working She's like, Mummy, when you grow old, can I take over the pea milk business? I'm like, where did she, where is this coming from? So she's already getting all of that into her head from now on. She's like, can I take over the pea milk business? I'm like, you have to ask Nikki, Nikki, Aunt Nikki for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's quite good to see them, you know, and they love it. And every time we have an adventure or something, like especially in London, she'll come along and she'll actually want to talk to like because we're sampling there, so she'll actually want to come and talk to customers, and she knows what to say as well. Oh, this one's got thirty four grams of protein. This one's got that. But yeah, she she loves it. That's amazing because no one no one can say no to a child. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should use them more. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's really cool, isn't it, when you've got kids kind of seeing that stuff happening and they're learning. Yeah, it's and such a and, and such a good example for them to see that work can enthuse you, mm. um, and if, especially if you've grown a business from the ground up. That I think to know that work is something to be excited about is a really nice yeah. thing for kids to yeah. see. Oh, definitely. I I used to go into my father's business when I was, you know, it's a family business, but I was probably five or six. And I used to get jobs like, you need to stuff these brochures into these envelopes. And then when I got a little bit older, you can put it through the franking machine. If anyone <laughs> listening remembers the, the franking machine, that was <gasps> the best. Laminate. The yeah. stationery cupboard was <laughs> so exciting. Heaven. Absolutely <laughs> heaven. 
Oh, it's so re- it's really cool. So what's what's coming on the future then for you guys? Where you know, so what you're stocked in where did you so, say? So Selfridges, um, Amazon, off our own website, and then 30 kind of independent health stores. Um, but we're doing quite a lot of work with food service um, at the moment, and that's becoming quite successful for us. We're, um, and it's interesting, you're, um, you know, giving feedback as well today, Rebecca, because chefs are really loving our products, and we've got quite a sharp intake of those at the moment, haven't we? Yeah. So just really enjoying cooking with them, um, using them in recipes and creating like allergen free or vegan dishes. Um, yeah, it's a constant struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with baking to find um dairy alternatives that behave like dairy and don't taste rubbish, yeah. to be yeah, exactly. to be frank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um yeah, I, so is that something that's in the forefront of your mind when you're developing products is how do they how yeah, how, how can you cook with them as we, well? We do want them to be complete milk replacements and not mm-hmm. just for drinks. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're always thinking about that because this is all we use in our households and we do a lot of cooking and baking. So yeah. we've got to work with all of that. So we're, we're doing quite a lot of work with universities as well at the moment. So King's College in London has replaced all of their um, dairy with our milks in all of their recipes across campus. Wow. And we're doing some great work with Royal Holloway, who we just launched with last week. We've kind of got like a signature uh, mocha drink out with them. And so we're just trying to do more and more like that to spread the world, help help organisations with their sustainability goals, but also make sure that, you know, we're getting nutrition in into young people mm-hmm. and um, as little oil as possible. Really? Yeah, it's that understanding, isn't it? That, that there's, a, there's the kind of education part as well, is it? So when you say you're going into kind of food service, is it is it kind of coffee shops? Is it following the Oatly well-trodden path? Because they launched, didn't they, straight into coffee shops. Yeah. And that's how they really kind of got their foothold as being such a such a massive brand today. Yeah, so we, we, we're having some conversations at the moment with um, some coffee shops. I can't say too much at the moment, but watch this space. Um, and then kind of more in with catering companies and people that um, are providing offices with food and drinks and, um, nice. and investment firms, law mm-hmm. firms. We're doing quite a little bit of work yeah. there as yeah. well. So um, we've kind of got fingers in all pies at the moment, but... Um, but yeah, no, it's all it's all positive feedback. So sounds super super busy. Thank you so yeah. much, guys, for coming in. As ever, I always feel like we get to the end of the show and I think, oh, we haven't had. Oh. I could chat forever. Yeah. Um, no, thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you so really much for coming in, both of you, and and thanks to you as well, Rebecca. Thank- Pleasure. Thanks for being here again. <laughs> Our fabulous guests, Suwa Hari and Nikki. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You've been listening to Food Rebels. We broadcast live at five every Wednesday through radio shows and stations around the UK and further afield, as well as podcasting apps, all the usual ones, iTunes, Spotify, Audible, whatever one you've got on your phone. If you're interested to appear on the show, please do get in touch on hello at foodrebels.co.uk as we'd love to hear from you, especially if you've got a rebellious story to tell us. (laughs) 